This is Mr. Kessler and this video is about motion graphing. Before we get into the different types of graphs and their lines and what their motion looks like, we need to remember what distance and time graphs are. The distance is always going to be on the y-axis and that's the axis that's running up and down or vertical and the time axis is going to be the x-axis. That's also called the horizontal axis. This point here is called the origin, and that's kind of the starting point. As time moves away from the origin, it is increasing on the x-axis, and as distance moves away from the origin, it is increasing on the y-axis. So this would be a typical distance and time graph. You could have an object that's moving um, away from a start point and back toward a start point like that. All right, let's look. This is the first example of a motion graph. And this is a when an object is not moving at all. Here's a distance time graph and we have a flat line or a horizontal line that goes throughout the graph. This is an example of a car that would be sitting at a stoplight. This car is sitting 15 meters away from the start point for one, two, three, four, five seconds. Okay, so this car, as time increases, the distance is not increasing at all. It's still at 15 meters at one second, two seconds, and so on. That car is not moving. So anytime you see a flat or horizontal line on a graph, on a distance time graph, we say it's at rest, or it's stationary or it's not moving. All three of those things are synonymous. All right, next, we have an object moving at a constant speed. This object right here, when we see a straight line like this that's moving at a slope, that's a constant speed. That means that at any point on the line, it's gonna have the same average speed. For example, this car may be traveling down a country road for every meter that it goes, one second passes by. So if we took the average speed formula, distance divided by time, at one second, this would be one meter per second. At two seconds, it would still be one meter per second. At three seconds, three divided by three, it would be one meter per second. At four seconds, it would still be one meter per second. The average speed's the same. So the constant speed is shown by a straight line on a graph. Time is increasing and distance is increasing at the same rate. All right, next let's look at um, something that's traveling. Object one is traveling not as fast as object two. This is object two. So this car may be going down a country road, this line right here, the one line may be going down a country road and this line may be going down a highway. The country road car is going to be going at a slower speed than the car traveling on the highway and I'll show you that. If we look at this point on the graph at three seconds, this car may have gone three meters, but this car will have gone uh, four meters. So the average speed will be higher for this car car two than car one. So the higher the slope, the faster or higher the speed of that object is traveling. All right, if I had a line like this, pretend this is an exact straight line, this would be the slowest, if this is object three, that would be the slowest traveling object in this graph. This would be the fastest, this would be the second fastest, and this would be the slowest object. All right, the more slope, the higher the speed. Let's look at this next graph. This is when something is accelerating, okay? This car was first traveling down a country road and it was going at a constant speed and then it entered an on-ramp for a freeway, sped up really fast and started going at a constant speed really, really fast. Let's look at this. As time is increasing on our x-axis right here, the car didn't travel that far in the distance. But then all of a sudden, at about this point 
on the graph, the distance started getting really, really far away from the start point. So it's traveling at a kind of slower speed here, and then we have that slope that's increased, and that means it's traveling much faster at this point. That's called when something is accelerating. You're traveling just over a period of uh, a short distance and a longer amount of time, and then a short amount of time, a long period of distance. It's an increase in speed or acceleration. The next graph, we see an object returning to its starting point. Okay, we have a car that's traveling down a road at a constant speed. It gets to a point, let's call this um, maybe 20 miles away. Okay, so I'm just going to put a 20 here. I don't have the unit of measurement written down, but I'm going to let you know it's 20 miles after five minutes. All right. And then it decides it wants to turn around and come back home. So after 10 minutes, it comes back home to its starting point. And as you can see, as the line goes down back towards the X axis, the distance is incre decreasing rather. So at this point right here, it may only be 10 miles away. Now I realize these numbers don't add up because it's very hard to go 20 miles in five minutes unless you're speeding, but um, it's just for demonstration purposes only. So when a line slopes back down to the right, that object is now, the time is still increasing the object is heading back to the starting point down here. All right. This graph right here shows all of the graphs we just talked about on one different graph and kind of gives you labels for each one. I'll kind of quickly go through them. This is a review. This is a summary of what we've done so far. So this line right here is a constant speed. He's going at a fast, steady speed because that line is sloped up really, really high he's going very fast. This line right here, he's going slower than the line I just showed you, but it's still at a steady constant speed. When he gets to this point in time, he stops the car. It's now stationary or not moving at all because we see that horizontal line. When it's a flat line or horizontal line, that means the object is not moving. And then at this point, he's returning back to the start point. And then finally, this line right here, it kind of has a curve to it, and it gets faster and faster and faster, or accelerating faster and faster and faster as time goes by. And that's kind of a summary of the four different types of motion graphs that you're going to see. Thanks for listening.